Hello again, episode three, how Gumtree changed our lives. Welcome to Stroongecast. And by the way, you are all strangers. Yes, it is a thing now. I love that. We've decided. I'm Andre. I'm Kirsten. And she is my lovely wife. And that seems to be my tagline. <laughs> um, had it been 2008, I couldn't have said that. But now I can. So let's take it back in time and tell you how we actually met. Because in the last episode, we were meant to talk about that. But it kind of didn't happen. We didn't go back far enough, did we? We didn't. And we have had a few comments asking if we would discuss it, explain, talk about the beginnings. And uh, drop a comment if you heard the little outtake at the end of the last episode Ugh. after the music. <laughs> yeah, My awesome. embarrassing moment. It was fine. Yeah. I can take credit for it if you want. <laughs> no, it was definitely my fault. Right, so before we get started, I do have to say we do have an RSS feed now. So you can copy and listen to this podcast in whatever catcher you like. It doesn't have to be on YouTube or the website. You can drop it in Apple Podcasts or Overcast or Downcast or whatever mm, cast cast you like. So that's fine. If you go to the Strangecast website, which is in the show notes, and if you're on YouTube in the YouTube description, there is a link. And actually, I did link the RSS and always will in each episode for you as well. So, 2007. Although we met on December the 2nd, obviously we were talking before that. And how did it start for you in terms of what you remember? I had recently moved out of my parents' house mm -hmm. into a rather nice little studio flat. I liked it. And it was lovely. It served a purpose. And I was spending the evening, I don't remember if it was a weekend, maybe you do. I'm not I sure. don't. Anyway, I was spending the evening with a friend. We were, I think she had mentioned that people put on Gumtree um, ads, I suppose, looking for, you know, partners, meeting people, whatever. I suppose a bit like some of these more crazy dating websites nowadays. But back then, there, there weren't really any of those. What was um, there? There was eHarmony and Plenty of Fish. I don't know if Plenty of Fish was around I don't know when then. it came around, but I don't remember them being as big a thing as they no. are now. <laughs> so people would put posts on Gumtree, you know, putting this is what I'm looking for, um, this is what I'm like. And we were kind of going through some of them and having a bit of a laugh um, because some of them were insanely crazy. Um, and Andres came up at the top of the page. I think... You told me afterwards that maybe you had paid for it to be. I paid a fiver. Yeah, to meet to the woman at, of my the now dreams. Look at that. Yeah, you only cost a it was fiver. Cheap, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it had his picture, looking very smart in a suit. Um, and I uh, honestly cannot remember at all what it said. Um, Nor can I. No, <laughs> what it said, but it did sound really interesting, and it was my friend at the time who said oh you should email him message him and it wasn't something that I was looking for or particularly interested in or anything but I guess it was just one of those moments where you just do something out of the ordinary um and I again I can't remember what I emailed what we said I, I have no I recollection have you have it somewhere I stole things yeah you do um so yeah, so I sent the first email and then you obviously replied and we emailed a fair bit backwards and forwards. Then we switched to Messenger. Then we switched to Messenger, yeah. Lots of ball messages, just getting to know each other, things that we liked, didn't like. Um, yeah, I don't know if you remember any of what we talked about. We have a transcript and we both read through parts of it yes. recently. And you know what? It just made me love you all over again. And it was Aww. so interesting because it's like, not like I don't love her now, obviously, but the little things, just the, the, the cute, silly messages, you know? Because we were, you know, very different people. We were very young, um, much more inexperienced in the world, I suppose. All so that. it's that innocence, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was that. And I don't know... <laughs> The responses I'd gotten to my message previously, I had a lady come over with a bottle of wine that was 
weird. And so I didn't have a I didn't have a um corkscrew at the time. And she came over with a bottle of wine. She didn't know that. A bottle of wine that required a corkscrew. So we dug it out with a knife. Wow. And there were bits of cork in the wine. That was a terrible day. Um and uh she asked all sorts of very odd questions about my blindness, like how do you see to feed yourself? And all this kind of madness. And when Kirsten and I start talking, and I told her on Messenger, basically straight up and be transparent, hey, you know, there might be some concern that I can't see, so meeting in a public place would be weird. By the way, don't ever do this. Don't ever do that this. That was the, like, honestly one of the most stupid decisions looking back. I mean, it worked out perfectly, it and I'm incredibly lucky, but I went to your flat to meet you for the first time. What? not telling anybody except for my 14 year old sister and not giving the address or anything i mean why honestly, did you do that why if did alice we do that? ever did that i would be absolutely livid it was Should the be. most stupid thing and i am so incredibly lucky that it worked out okay i am not a blind a axe murderer very very different story but yeah don't let your children do this no and if you're a child don't Ever Even if you're an adult. This. I mean, I was an adult and I still did it. And this was before find my friends or, you know, tracking air tags or 360 or whatever tracking, you know, you want to use. And you know what the worst thing is? Your phone reception yes. died. Oh, it was awful. My parents were ringing because I was late to their house and then my sister had to obviously explain to them that I had gone to meet some random new person that nobody knew, nobody had heard of they didn't know where I was my phone wasn't working there was no reception so they were leaving message after message and it was wow yeah stressful that could have ended totally differently couldn't it (laughs) it really could have but your sister was a champ and we did talk about this very recently actually and she told me that she told your parents after a while and then not long afterwards you walked in all happy like (laughs) nothing had happened and she was livid (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they weren't impressed at all. It was late to dinner and I just had to sit there eating. I can't even remember what it was now, but um, yeah, maybe not the best way to introduce you to them. <laughs> no, followed by my first meeting with them some months later, but that was a different thing. Yeah. It was all right. I mean, I laugh about it now. It was during Easter of 2008. But let's go back to... 2007. So we met December the 2nd. I had last t- episode said that I asked you to be my girlfriend. You did greed for some reason and uh, never left. No. So we did not spend Christmas Day together because we spent it with our families traditionally. And, but we, well, we spent Christmas evening together. Yes. Because I, what I did, or was it Boxing no, Day? No, it was Boxing Day. That's right. It was Boxing Day. You came to visit me at my flat. I did. And yeah. Because what happened is, I was at dinner with my granddad and my mum on Boxing Day. And um, we live, obviously, in different places. My mum lived in one place and I lived in another. But I knew that I wanted to go and see Kirsten. So I already knew where she lived and I didn't have a bag packed. So I remember jumping in a cab after dinner and, you know, staying long enough to be pleasant. (laughs) Do the pleasantries. (laughs) I, I wanted to see her so bad. It was crazy. It was that, you know, first in love thing. I couldn't help it. I still want to see you so bad. So it must have worked out something. Um, I came home. I asked the cabman to wait and I would pay him extra. Um, And I basically threw it together an overnight bag, jumped in the cab and he drove me to you. That was one of the few times in December that I came to see you uh, instead of you coming to me. And it rained really heavily that night. I remember that. It was really loud. It woke us up like four in the morning. And I think you were working the next day or something. So it was annoying. I don't remember. remember. <laughs> My memory is absolutely shocking. I don't remember that. But the rain, certainly. Yes. And I remember you had a ticking clock on the wall, and I just remember this is ticking down the seconds to my having to leave. No. Oh. <laughs> <It was> so <laughs> silly. Oh, God. Honestly, it's tragic now. But, uh, no. yeah. It's sweet. Sweet and romantic. But a, a more interesting, perhaps, a memory, uh, memory that I have is in the same month it can't have been or maybe it was early january actually so i came to see you on a friday evening mm-hmm. and you weren't expecting me no you i was on the phone with you <laughs> yes i was on the phone with you and uh i was packing up my bag at the same time got off the phone said see you uh jumped in a cab and appeared at the door 
I got out of the cab and I could I could smell this funny smell. I don't know what's going on. It's like it's very smoky. And I walk in the in the flat door, having I knew you were going to tell this story. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> and the way it worked is she had a big open um, foyer area and then you know carpeted stairs because it was a converted uh, house. I think, or convert. I don't know. Was it a church? I don't know. It was a kind of building. No, it was a purpose-built block of flats, but it did have quite a big open. It was very part posh in there. In. It was. Nice. I remember quite liking the place actually. Yeah. So I walk okay. out the carpet, and I could. What is that? Ah, oh, I must be coming from somewhere else. Walk in the flat. She's burnt popcorn, hasn't she? And it wasn't because she came to open the door for me. Oh no, this happened before. Anybody that's made bags of popcorn in the microwave will know how easy it is to burn it. So, yeah, you've never let me forget that. <laughs> I, I, honestly, it was funny more than anything. I was just confused. Like, this girl can cook, right? I've already tasted her cooking. She's great, but she burnt popcorn. <laughs> it was funny. But that was, I think, one of the last times I ended up at that place. The first time I went there... I do remember, because my geeky side was like, okay, you have this modem on the floor. And, you know, wireless was not as big a thing as it is now. So she didn't have wireless in the flat. And that meant, and, and her router only had one cable to go to a computer. So she could be online or I could be online. And I'm like, nah. So the next, one of the first gifts I bought her, it wasn't flowers or chocolate. It was a better router because that's just how sad I am. Yeah, it was. The and then router, the next was the phones. phones. Yeah. Yeah. So that she could talk to me lying in bed. It's kind Cause... of always been like that. Every <laughs> gift pretty much that you've ever bought me has been techy or yeah. you know, along those lines. Actually, you know what? Tell you've got to tell the netbook story. It's jumping around in time a bit, but the netbook story is funny. Um gosh. when you were pregnant. Yeah, so I was pregnant with Jake, so it would have been two thousand and nine and you had bought yourself the cute little notebook, um, which was what, like a tiny laptop? Yeah, Did like a 10 inch it? screen, lovely little thing. Yeah, you know, I still love that form factor, it was very cute. Um, and I had said how nice it was, and how you know, it was, it was really cute. And I think I must have come home from work one day, and on the side table next to the sofa was the notebook I thought sat open um and I, d I don't remember what I what I said what did I say this is you know something along the lines of oh this is yours or do you want yeah. it back and do you like, want me nope. to pass it to you because you'd left it there which was an <laughs> unusual place for you and you said no 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 that's yours and yeah you'd bought me my very own because I was studying at the time as well so it was really handy to take to and from and it lived work. on the bump it did it used to rest very nicely on my humongous stomach <laughs> it was great for watching stuff back then wasn't it and we you'd you'd uh, do emailing and all kind of things had yeah. a lovely keyboard it was brilliant i loved it so we had two of those they were for the curious they were samsung nc10s and they were really really cheap at the time uh low power uh notebooks uh, they called them netbooks and uh, mine lived with me for many, many years. And honestly, if that form factor still existed and was still powerful to this day, I'd probably own one. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I gave mine to my brother Dwayne several years afterwards when I no longer needed it. But it was so small, it kind of sat on top of my speaker box in the corner of the room, which is not big. And uh, it ran the outside stream when we have mics in the garden. But yeah, they were cool. And I remember you bought a neoprene sleeve for yours so it could fit in yeah. a big handbag had to be a big handbag kind of a hagrid size handbag but it did fit just, just an average woman's handbag to be honest <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i suppose so but yeah no that was good but i think one of the things that i have seen in the comments that people perhaps were asking or thinking about was or what we've been talking about yeah about our perhaps lack of things in common Oh yeah. <clears throat> and how that either bothers us or doesn't bother us, affects us. So what maybe you say about it? Well, I was gonna say maybe you could say how it started off, because we obviously knew at the beginning that we didn't have sort of the two main things. True. Two main interests, yours being music, mine being animals. Um 
you know, we knew we didn't have those in common, mm. but it it didn't seem to be an issue or a problem. And I think we found little things, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. Things that we found funny, TV shows, things that we didn't like. Oh, um, texting with um, shorthand. Text speak. Yeah. She never once has written me a text with PLZ in it. Thank God. Or yeah, great we bonded over things eight. like that. Huh? Great with the oh, number eight. No, no just no. <laughs> never. Yeah, so actually that is something that did come up. Like, what do you guys have in common, if anything? And uh, there are, of course, as we talked about in episode one, that, um, and episode two, actually, like, if you don't do this, then your life or your partner is not real. Lies, like the way you sleep. Mm. Not having stuff in common is not mm. grounds for divorce, right? No, not at all. Um, I love music and I show her some of my stuff sometimes and that's fine. She does not play it or sing it. Um, but I don't really mind or, you know, pay attention to animals that much. We have cat, dog and guinea pigs and I don't really play with them, but she loves them. So we don't have that in common. But what we do have in common is like just a shared love of people. Nice people, right? It's got to be nice people. And we surround ourselves with some really nice people and great, great friends. And particularly, our family is good to us. And the uh, love of our kids, obviously, because we made them. Yes. They're good. Um, and also, particular TV shows. She got me into Inside Number 9 in a big, big way. She got me into Tim Harford's Cautionary Tales podcast in a big, big way. But books as well. We, I think. <laughs> Go and tell the books. <laughs> the John Mars books that are our favourite. But there are other books that we've read. And Alice, how do you say her name? Alice uh, Fiennes? Feeny? Feeny. Is it Feeny? Do you know? I, I think so. Yeah. Alice Fiennes is actually the editor on Cautionary Tales. That's a different Alice. Yeah. But I think as we've got older, you know, when we were younger, we weren't together for a, a particularly long time before we had Jake. And then everything becomes about your baby. So we may not have had as much in common back then because didn't really have time to do anything um so definitely as we've got older we've found more in common and we've made more effort to find things in common that's the thing we've taken the time to find books that we can both read or tv shows or whatever it is so that we can discuss those things absolutely um you know and i love listening to your music or listening to you talk when you get really passionate and excited about you know something that's just come out or whatever it might be um and even though i know that you don't particularly like the animals you'll still listen to me when i'm telling you something about them and well you could send me cat sneezing and that's great yes i can send you cat sneezing or dog singing that too you know i love that, <laughs> that it kind of relates to works. music that way yeah so i think just there is that misconception that if you are in a relationship or married and you don't have big things in common, that it means that you're not on the same wavelength, that it's not going to work. But actually, as long as you're accepting and willing to listen to the other person when they're talking about their passions um, and try and involve yourself, like me, the, the whole point of me doing this podcast with you is to sort of come into your world a little bit, I suppose. I've been telling people that. Yeah. And I've told them just how much I've loved that you join me in this journey. Absolutely. It's something to do together. But even without this, it doesn't mean that we don't work. It no. just means we have more to talk about in the fact that you can teach me things and tell me things and I can, you know, tell you about various things. Even if you're not hugely interested, you'll still listen. And that's the point. Yeah, and actually, this is interesting because I was talking to a friend of mine, Paul, on WhatsApp today about the first episode of the podcast, and he was talking to me about how he agreed with me about the orange to begin with, but then listening to your viewpoint changes. And he, he's been married a long time as well. And the same blindsided. I know a lot more blindsided couples than I first thought, by the way. A yeah. lot more. Um, and he's like, your viewpoint was so interesting to him, it reminded him of a film called Beautiful Minds. Mm -hmm. about us and I'm, I'm going to get it wrong it's either psychologist or psychiatrist and his wife and in in part of the film I think there was a noise going on outside outside the window 
and it was very annoying to this man with this beautiful mind and he didn't know how to solve it he was going through all these scenarios like how do you and the wife just come in and shut the window yeah now i want to watch that film because i'm really curious about it <laughs> and I, I thought maybe we could find it and watch it together yeah i'd never heard of it till today have you heard of it i don't think so i think we should look it up sure because <laughs> i want to know what else like that's just funny isn't it because sometimes it's the simple things yeah and on a complete tangent i think you find that people who have i don't want to say the most brilliant minds because that makes it sound like other people don't but sometimes people who are highly intelligent in certain fields do struggle with basic other skills so like when i used to work at a children's hospital and some of the professors that worked there who were absolutely incredible and you know it could do amazing things they couldn't book their own train tickets or get from a to b across london because it's just not how their brains worked they needed their um, secretaries to do all the simple things for them and run their day-to-day -day lives but then they had this incredible knowledge and ability um you know in the medical field so i guess that's similar to that definitely relates yeah i think so it does i, I think as well like when I hear of tales like you just told, and I've read a book similar to that uh, about a guy basically that didn't do a lot but could work out all kinds of mad mathematical craziness. Uh, same kind of vein, I think. He lived in a basement and barely fed himself or clothed himself, but he could calculate all kinds of craziness in his head. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's an amazing thing to think about. Yeah, maybe the brain is just so fixated on one one thing. The simple things just, you know, they're meaningless, I guess. So really, it's true when people say only women can multitask properly. <coughs> yeah, Sometimes. It's the women that does it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I can multitask. For example, I can read brain and listen to audio at the same time. But maybe that's just all in my head. And really, I'm missing ten. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> ten times more than I think I am. So traditions like now that we've met it's 2007 um i didn't know what my life was going to be like and i i actually maybe somebody would have asked if we don't cover it is what's it like being with someone who can see if you're blind and vice versa honestly at first i think i was quite nervous and embarrassed is my house tidy am i clean enough like you know do i dress myself decently enough not you know like clean but you know what i mean um is there anything out of place that she would be too nice to tell me about? All these kind of things. And maybe, you know, maybe you had thoughts about this kind of thing too. It's hard to think back that far because obviously we've been together so long. But yeah. I remember you were my first really long-term <laughs> sighted girlfriend. Probably well, the first actually. So I think all the things that you are saying that you were nervous about, everybody's nervous at the beginning of a relationship. So your concerns might be slightly different but everybody has those worries you know when you invite someone back to your house or your flat whatever is it going to be okay they're going to like it they're going to see something they shouldn't you know are they going to like me they're going to like what I wear it's just a slightly different take on it from your perspective yeah so you know in that I, I just say that because I want people to realize that it's just the same as every other couple I think sometimes people think that because you're blind and I'm sighted the way our relationship works is completely different it's really not it's exactly the same as any other couple there just might be slightly different things that you need a bit more help with but that's it otherwise we're just the same as any other couple um but no I I what do I remember? Well, I'm quite a nervous, anxious person anyway, and quite shy. So everything was about what am I going to say, you know, and obviously <laughs> I really liked you. And so it was more, am I going to say something stupid? Is he going to think, you know, that I don't, I'm not intelligent enough or, you know, all those things, which you, you know, you get over quite quickly, I think. One of the first things I remember, we had an outing <clears throat> just to the bank. And when we lived in uh, West London, the bank was literally like a two minute walk from the house. So it was a test that was not a written test. I wanted to see how she guided me very well, it turned out. 
And uh, when we get to the bank, I needed to get some money out. And some people want to be craning over your shoulder and making sure that A, you're safe, but B, if they can snap your card number. There are weird people in the world. You stepped back and I put the card in and I got as far as the what do you want out screen and I said, can you come over and help me? And she said, are you sure? And I say, yeah, because this at this time, machines didn't talk. And from that point on, I knew you were quite safe. You know, <laughs> she wasn't in it for the money. No. It's a weird thing. Like, it's weird talking about it now. But, but it is quite a vulnerable to... position that you put yourself in. Yeah. You know, having only known me, what, a few weeks? It was a few days, I think. Not even okay, maybe a days. week, if that. But I needed cash. And my mum was busy. And like I say, those machines didn't talk then. You don't want to screw it up and like take out 500 instead of 50 or 20. <laughs> like if you don't have it, you could overdraft yourself quickly. So I had you do that part. And um, you hadn't even been around very long, but you gave it to me and you said, do you want a receipt? Just in case you want to check with somebody else. And that was what clued me into the fact that she's safe, you know, she's all right. She's cool. We're good. <laughs> it was funny, but also very heartwarming at the same time. Yeah. Then later on, we had an outing to a music shop. I wanted to return a keyboard. And this was not so good. It wasn't your fault. Do you remember the guy? It was Turnkey Music. They shut down now. I can say the name quite happily. Yeah. We went and we stood in this queue for a long time. And I tried to return the keyboard. I tried to talk to the guy. And they were opposite me behind the counter. And staring he spoke at to me. me the whole time. They spoke to her the whole time. As if he wasn't there. Even though he's answering, the, asking the questions, you know, responding... It they still so looked rude. at me and I had no idea. I just kept saying, I, I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't a great, great experience there. But this is the kind of thing that happens. And you got to see that firsthand. It was probably mm -hmm. one of the first times you saw that. Yeah. It hasn't really happened since, but... No, it definitely happens less and less nowadays. I think people are more aware. <laughs> obviously, this was, what, 16 years ago? Wow, when you put it like that. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> it's old. It's a lifetime. Um, uh, so yeah, I think people are much more aware in how they treat everybody now, but back then it, yeah, it was definitely, um, not a great, a great shop to visit. No. And they got shut down soon afterwards. They filed for bankruptcy and you know what? I was almost happy about it. Their, their customer service and their staff were just rude. And it's a shame because the place was great. I was able to play all sorts of keyboards and things. But I've been into other shops where the staff do know how to help. And uh, somebody would come over and be like, okay, well, here's the button layout. And here's what you press to go up and down. They didn't do any of that. You were there and I had to ask you to do it. And you're not technically musically inclined in that way. So we had to work it out together. Yeah. And I could have been a customer. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> not in that place. But yeah, I just... Things like that really annoyed me. But I remember I remember walking in there and going, oh, it's this nice shop and, you know, people are pretty cool in here. And actually, I was wrong. It was the players that are pretty cool. The staff were not. And I remember we left that place both really angry. We did. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we put up with. <laughs> but even though, you know, we don't have that in common, she was kind enough to take me all the way down to Tottenham Court Road. That's where it was at the time, possibly. Or Denmark Street, whatever it was. Um, that was our first outing together, apart from the so. bank. Yeah, I think so. And she was a great guide. I know lots of people that are terrible guides, and they walk you into everything. And even things that aren't on the street, they'll still hit you with them. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, dear. It's true, actually, because um, one of the people I work play with sometimes, a uh, steel pan player. Terrible guide. Great musician. Terrible guide. His partner, Rebecca, though, brilliant. And our, Rebecca's always like a pretend backseat driver. And I mean it in the nicest way. And she's always like, Wade, Wade, mind the lamppost, mind the curb, mind the car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fellow blind people, you've probably been through this before. You have great people in your life that know how to guide you safely and people that you just know you're going to be hurt at the end of the day. Jake, luckily, isn't like that. Jake is one of the safe people. Honestly, one of the best guys. And it's funny, children bringing it back in in a way to us children learn quickly about mummy and daddy and who to um how to get them to avoid things they do the rug 
Do tell yeah. about the rug. So right <laughs> from when we had Jake, right from when he was a tiny baby in our first flat together, we had a rug, large rug in the middle of the living room. And even when he was a you know, tiny, tiny baby, just about able to sit up, I always made sure that the toys that we were playing with were on the rug. And it was so that Andre could get around the rug safely. And, you know, obviously things stray, you know, especially when you've got babies and toddlers, but it was definitely always aimed at the toys stayed on the rug. So as he grew up and then as when Alice came along, we did exactly the same. We always had the rug in the middle of the room. That was where the toys stayed on there. And they just, they were amazing. They learned that that was what needed to be done to keep it safe. There would be times I remember when Alice was a baby and she'd be playing with toys and something would have, you know, gone astray. You'd get up to walk, you know, into the kitchen or whatever. And Jake would say, oh, daddy, stop, stop. And he'd run and he'd quickly pick up all the toys and put them on the rug, you know, to make sure. So I don't think we ever really had to make a big deal of, you know, come on, put your toys on the rug. You've got to do that for daddy. It just was accepted. Yep. That's what I need to do. That's what I do. And I think because it was right from the beginning, there was never an issue. I don't think you've ever fallen over a toy. Or, I mean, you know, all parents have stood on things. Um, but I don't think you've ever fallen over anything or had an incident because nope. they've always, always been so cautious about it. Not for you, though. <laughs> no, not for me. They, yeah, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm fine um but no they were always and you know we taught them at the beginning that if they wanted to get your attention they would come over to you that they needed to put their hand on your knee you know they couldn't just come and stand there and look at you and wait for you to realize <laughs> um but kids are incredibly quick at picking that up Super um, smart. yeah it's just their reality um you know you've never had to teach Jake how to be a guide he's just done it really well yeah he just you know is naturally really aware of that um so yeah i think we're really lucky but also we just put things in place really early on so that was just normal to them don't you think it is what i find funny like you say about me getting up and walking is that i came into the room from the other side once so i was i was not in the room and i was coming in and Jake was playing with something, and he stopped immediately. He took my hand and walked me around the safe zone, um, and I could sit down. And for you, just look at you and like, just carry on, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, and I remember somebody was there in the house when that happened once, and they're like, are you not going to help mummy? Just not shake his head. No. But it always helped me. He, he had a, like a sixth sense when I needed to do something or go somewhere, and he would know. And even, you know, kids at play are usually quite one-track minded. Yeah. But he would always stop. <laughs> he would always walk me around if needed. Like if he was laying out cars, then it was kind of the exception. Or building something with Lego. It could stray. And that was fine. But there was always occasion where I would have to go somewhere or do something. And he would always help me to navigate it. And in their room where there was no rug and I wanted to come in and see them. Then I used to get navigated around all sorts of piles. And that was really fun. <laughs> All the, the strips, the rows of cars that he used to lay out. Huge amounts. Yeah. Massive traffic jam. It's kind of fun. Mm. So yeah, had it not been for Gumtree, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be with this amazing lady and these wonderful children that we have. And I wouldn't be here today talking to you about life, the universe, and Kirsten. And, and we wouldn't have you. Yeah. yeah. No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I does, guess it goes both ways. Yeah. But yeah. That's us for this time. I hope that you get some questions and thoughts out of this. But you know, ah, I didn't even say, because people in the US might be like, what's Gumtree? It's kind of your equivalent of Craigslist in the States. Because I don't know if Gumtree is in the US, but if it isn't, yeah, think of Craigslist. But the Brit thing. Yeah. I have to look up what I wrote, you know, because I'm sure that I would have kept a record of it somewhere. And we can laugh over it and how bad it was. Oh, but it worked, so it's fine. Your five pounds was worth it. it wow, yeah. Five pounds and it got me you. I mean, had I known. 
an amazing Christmas present. <laughs> I don't know what I got you for Christmas that year, but you got me a money sorter. I did. I think you got... Was it not the phones? Maybe it was that. Maybe. Because you were still living in that place. Yeah. And I wanted to uh, drag you into my lair sooner. <laughs> that didn't happen until uh, June of 08. Well, technically. Yeah. But. And she moved in with a chest freezer where we store all the things we don't want. <laughs> all the bodies. All of them. All of them. <laughs> I might still be in there in that old house. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? We've moved twice since then, so, you know, if they're still there, they're right deep at the bottom. <laughs> then I could really become the blind axe murderer I was going to be when I met you, but oh, you know, yes. I saved it for later. <laughs> well, there we go. It's been a fun episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, come back next time. I don't know what we'll talk about next time. That's probably going to be based on user feedback. Yeah, ask some questions. questions. We'll try and answer them. Yeah. I mean, we, we do love our books. We do love our family. So, you know, let us share in that with you. Strangers, until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>